it's a homework. That was for me. I'm doing homework that was due two days ago because stuff. That's why. First, stuff. No. Open up this PowerPoint. Second. Hey, look, I can find stuff in this PowerPoint very easily, and then when I find it in the PowerPoint, I can then go to the textbook and find. Uh, yeah, I can look at the headings of the chapter. Yeah, it's not going to be the easiest thing ever to find stuff in chapters. Although I could use this finds function, but this only this searches across the entire book, which is not as convenient. But what I'm going to be doing is taking a quiz. That was fine. That was due two days ago. And I also have to do a problem set, which could be very hard. Dang it. Dang it. This is weird. Bye. Okay, we'll see what, what happens to my grade on this quiz as a result of turning it in late. What will happen? Will it automatically take off a certain percentage? It might. Okay. I think this is going to be easy because it just says that it's multiple choice questions that consist of definitions and short answers to questions. Short answers sounds bad, but it's still multiple choice. So. And it's only 10 questions, so you would think I'd be able to do this five. Well, and what I did was read most of these PowerPoint slides. I did not read the chapter. So that completely defeats the purpose of me turning this in late. <laughs> Are you serious? No, but not exactly because... Because what if I want to look up something in the textbook while I'm taking the quiz? I specifically actually did consider the, the idea that maybe I could take the quiz. <laughs> well, actually, what what day was it? The, probably Monday. Like, I considered taking it on Monday, and then I thought to myself, no, I, I want to have access to the textbook just in case I need to look something up. It doesn't specify whether it's open book, so therefore I'm going to assume it's not open book. I mean, it is open book. It doesn't say that it's closed book, so... Hopefully this is easy. Come on. Just be easy, please, dang it. Come on, please. Are there any math questions? Well, what do you care if there's math questions? Hey, look, it's a math question. No, it's not. Okay, this looks kind of easy. Um, the daily closing values of the Dow Jones. Oh. Wait, that's got to be time series. I remember reading that. The daily closing values, it's got to be time series because stuff. With symmetric bell-shaped curve, what percent are within two standard deviations? I think it's 95% because 68 is one standard deviation and 95 is two. And then what is the most common type of chart for showing the distribution of a numerical variable? Thank you. I don't know. Let's see. I'm going to guess histogram. I don't know. Histogram. Hey, look, it says it's the most common type of chart for showing the distribution of a numerical variable. Instagram. The mode is best described as most frequently. <laughs> Why do they have the correct answer? Different color from all the other ones. <laughs> How is the media defined? If the number of observations is even. Okay. 
turn. Uh, my brain was just completely not paying attention at all when I read that out loud. It was just. Anyways, I was meaning to find what the number of observations is even is defined as the different, no, the average of the two middle observations. Good job. The, the data that arise from counts are called discrete. I think discrete. This is so nice I can search with PowerPoint. Boom. Um, the count. Boom. Those one. Discrete data. And if a value represents the 99, uh, 95th percentile, that means that 95% of all the values, all values are below this value. Yes. Correct. Right? If I can't get this stuff wrong because I only have one shot at it, and it's going to be a lot of points lost if I give them two out of what? 20? Uh, yes. Which of the following are the three most common measures of central tendency? It's going to be the mean. Really? Come on. The mean, the median, and something. Ugh, Three. <laughs> this is so funny. Oh, come on. No, they don't have it as that. Uh, central tendency. Measures of central tendency. Mean. Median mode? Is that the one? Is those, are those the three? Because they don't have a, a variance. I guess that's not a measure of stuff. So. Okay. Well, mean, median, and mode. Because variance is near deviation, I guess, are not measures of central tendency. Coding males as one and females as zero, which illustrates the use of that, I believe, is what it is. Let me just double check. Yeah. Yeah, right? Because it's 0 to 1. What else could it possibly be? Gender and states are what type of data? Categorical? Kind of categorical, right? It could also be ordinal, couldn't it? But it's categorical. Um, watch as I get something wrong, stupidly. I didn't even need the textbook, so this was a waste, this was stupid to wait two days to do this. Well, how was I supposed to know? How was I supposed to know I wouldn't need the textbook? <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, there you go. Is it going to give me 20 out of 20, even though it's two days late? Oh yeah, yeah you may notice I have a 4 out of 10 on a quiz. <laughs> So basically, actually, it's probably going to end up being a 7 out of 10, which is still bad. The reason it's 4 out of 10 is because a bunch of the questions, he forgot to put answers to the questions. <coughs> so those are automatically marked incorrect. Oh, yeah, yeah. Dang it, he hasn't posted a grade for the other quiz yet. It's gonna be such a pain to grade that thing because, because it was kind of it was kind of a hard quiz, and he literally said as he was grading the first few that the three people, the three people who we graded got three different answers. <laughs> okay, let's see if he actually did put it in there. Probably not. I don't see it. Thing. So we're done with the quiz that took five minutes. I could have done that on time. But how was I supposed to know that I didn't need the textbook? Now the hard thing here is to do the problems. I don't want to do the problems. <laughs> Can I just do that tomorrow? Why did I even open a... 
Well, I was planning to do it today is the thing. I was planning to try to do it today so that I could get it done. It's actually two days late. But really, I have an excuse that I didn't have access to the textbook until Tuesday. That was cool. I don't want to do this. Well, I, I don't, but at the same time, I don't want to waste this 10 minutes of video that I made on this OB, on OBS. What, what kind of logic is that? Okay, we have the textbook open. It's a waste of time. It's going to take five years to do these problems because I have to figure out how to do it in Excel. Let's see. Let's just at least look at them, I guess, to see what they are. Also, I'm going to have to watch the video that she made on how to do the problems, which is very nice that the professor gave us that video. She seems to be providing us with videos that will help us through these problems, so that's good. Um, I mean, it's just basic like, math stuff anyways. It's like statistics. It's funny, I took a statistics class, but we never actually did anything on a computer. We, I don't think we used Excel or anything. We just did we just did like math problems the, the entire time, basically. So, dude, there's literally a rubric. Are you kidding me? Isn't it just a right or wrong answer for the problems? If there's a rubric for this, that's a bad sign. Makes mathematically relevant. What? You have to literally explain the solution? Are you kidding me? This assignment is going to take so long. Oh my goodness. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. Does the professor get actually give us the answers to these problems and we just have to... Or does... She like, to what extent is the information given on how to solve the problems? Like, let's look at the announcement and see here. Basically, I go over the problems in Excel, show how to work each one. That is extremely helpful. Because if I don't understand something, I can just watch the video. Oh my god, I just realized this. there are two videos. It took me this long. I saw this announcement posted like a week ago. And I didn't even notice until just now that there's two videos. Two hours. Okay. Well, that's going to be fun. I'm not going to watch through the whole videos. I'm going to try to see if I can solve the problems myself. But it's going to hard. That's funny. I have no idea what they, they even are. I don't know how hard they are. I don't know anything about them. I haven't even looked at them at all yet. In fact, I couldn't look at them at all whatsoever until yesterday when I finally got access to the textbook. Over like one, how many weeks did I have not have the textbook for this class? For the first two weeks of class, I did not have the textbook. But I was supposed to be able to get the text. I, I should have, what I should have done is gotten the the code for the textbook from the textbook center. That's what I had to do to get to access the textbook. I didn't know I had to do that. That was one drinking water. Let's see.
Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here are the problems. That was What? It says page 63. It's not page 63. Hello? Please tell me I have the right textbook. Oh no, this is not good. This is not good. Dude. Wait, what? Why is it start on problem 38? Wait a minute. Okay. Look, there's problems. This is the start of the problems. It starts on page 79. Not, not 63. Or does it? That's an example. That's not a problem. It says problem 30. Start on problem 30. Dude, what if this is not... What if this is not the right thing? Okay, it says start... What? It says it starts in problem 38 right there. What? No, this doesn't look good. This looks like... I'm not, I don't even have the right textbook. What? It starts on problem 38. Why? What? Please tell me I got the right textbook. Okay. Business analytics, data analysis, and decision making. Do I have the syllabus? Let's see. Where's the textbook? Business analytics. Data Analysis and Decision Making, 7th Edition. Yes, it looks like I have the right one. So, why... I am on Chapter 2, right? I'm not on Chapter 1, I'm on Chapter 2. Where's Chapter 2? I am in Chapter 2. Okay, wait just a minute. And she says some of the other stuff is on page 73 to 75. These page numbers are not right, and these numbers of questions are not right either. Why is it starting on question number 38? What? What? What on earth? What? Dang it. What is going on here? I'm going to now have to click on the video to see if she is showing where she's getting these problems from. No, not the discussion thing. Zoom video. Great. I just love Zoom videos. Have any questions per se, but if you do have questions, certainly either put them in the chat or unmute through the chapter two questions that were, or not questions, they should specify prompt chapter. Um, so the first one is problem number 30 from chapter two, and I will just share my screen. Problem number 30. Problem number 30. Okay, show the textbook. Okay, now if any of you are not seeing enough Excel spreadsheets, somehow let me know because then I've done something wrong. <laughs> awesome. Okay, 
So this is um, wait, is this in class? CEO compensation study analyzed CEO pay for U.S. Uh, companies, and it analyzed it for a certain fiscal year with at least five billion. And oh no, statements between certain dates. Anyway, the data is all in this file. PO two thirty XLS. So that's what I've got open. Why are we starting on 30? Where's, where is problem 30? She said, okay, it's, she said it's on page 63. It's not here. I'm gonna go to chapter one and see if there's problem 30 and see if that's actually it, but it's not. It shouldn't be because it's not in chapter one. What is going on here? Chapter one only goes up to number 18. Do they have what it, oh, wait. dude. This is gonna be extremely annoying. No, I don't wanna go through the whole chapter. She said it's on page 63. According to this, it's page 63. What? What? Wait. Oh, dude, I think I just realized it. I just realized what I'm missing. But this still doesn't make any sense. It's not page 63, obviously. It's not. But maybe I can find it. It's not at the end of the chapter. It's at the end of a section of a chapter. Which is going to take five years to find. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, these page numbers are not right. According The uh, directions say it's on page... Okay, I think I found it. Here we go. It's got to be this. It's got to be this because she was talking about this pay of CEOs. Yes, this is the problem that we were are going to do. It's on page 71. This is incorrect. It's not on page 63. Problem number 30 is on page 71. Create a new variable that is the sum of salary and bonus. Create a new variable. Okay, that sounds easy. Create a box plot of this new variable. Okay, it's not gonna that's not gonna be easy. But I can figure it out by reading the textbook or it's kind of tempting to just watch the video to see how to do everything instead of reading the textbook. Oh my. Oh man. Mild outliers are observations between blah, 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 where is extreme or blah. Use these definitions to identify the names of all CEOs who are mild outliers. Okay, so yeah, I think I could do that. That sounds doable. 
much as I don't. I'm a stupid idiot, so anyways, bye.